Let's go ahead and continue where we left off in the last video with creating the sci-fi shield hit effect. And we'll start to build out the actual particle effects in this. So as I said before, this project file will be available on Patreon. So if you want to dive in and go particle or uh, setting by setting, not particle by particle, <laughs> I suppose particle by particle, but setting by setting and see what I did, you can grab it on Patreon. This is the final project file, but we're going to go ahead and just rebuild this effect here. So let's go ahead and dive in here. We're going to start off by we need to create some particles that are going to move towards our object and then they need to hit our object and stop. So let's just tackle that. Let's create a sphere to start off with. Now you can use whatever geometry you want. It doesn't have to be a sphere. I'm just going to use a sphere for this. And I actually used a grid in the actual final project file. So you can use whatever you want, but let's go ahead and just use a sphere for this and let's crank up the frequency make it a polygon sphere and then i'm going to move it kind of out of where the camera is going to see it so we'll do a negative 15 in the x direction and i'm going to move this up just a little bit so we have the particles that are going to be flying towards the center there i'm going to maybe crank up the scale just a little bit there as well and then let's drop down a mountain node because we're going to be spawning the particles on this object so i just want to kind of break up the the actual um, the geometry, like the, the shape. And maybe I'll move this up just a little bit more. And then let's find a good shape. Maybe something like that will do. We have the particles now that are going to need to move towards this. So let's create the particles by dropping down a pop net and we'll dive in there. And by default, it's going to have on the guide. So let's come into our pop source and just dis disable those. I'm also going to turn on the particles so, so you can see kind of what's going on, or the, the points, I mean. So you can see we have a bunch of points that are being spawned in. This is obviously way too many. We don't want this many lasers being fired towards our shield all at once. So let's come into the birth and let's just drop this constant birth rate down to something like five. And now we have a bunch of particles being spawned, but far less than what we had before. So now we need to move them towards the center of our object, the, the shield. And we're gonna do that with a pop attract, but I wanna touch on this life expectancy real quick, because by default, this is set to 100 seconds. Now it doesn't really matter too much as long as they have a life expectancy that is long enough to get them towards the center here and actually collide with our shield. You can leave this at 100 for now, but we'll adjust uh, some other particle settings in a bit with this life expectancy. So let's drop down that pop attract and wire that on up. And with this pop attract, if I go ahead and rewind this and press play, you can see that the particles start to move towards the center or the origin of our scene because that's the default goal of the pop attract. And then they kind of overshoot it. They're also moving a little slow. So let's tackle all that. We want to move up the goal just a little bit, maybe like 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So it's kind of more in the center of our shield. That's uh, the setting that I found that is about right for the scene. So you'll have to play around with that, see uh, kind of what, what works best for your, your scene scale. We also want to up this force scale just to make the particles move a little bit faster. And we press play now the particles are moving a lot faster towards the center. Now they're still overshooting our our shield or where our shield would be. So we need to tackle that next by creating a collision object. So we can do a static object and then we need a merge. And if we wire in our static object and our end of the merge and our pop solver into the merge, we need to actually switch switch the inputs there anything that you want to be a collision object it needs to be on the left side of the merge node for the pop solver because it needs to uh, be set up that way in order for it to read it in so everything on the left is going to be considered a a collision object and everything on the right will not be considered now we can actually use the geometry of our shield here as the static object but it runs a little bit slower if you do that so we want to convert it to a a volume in order to have it calculate a little bit faster so we need to drop down a polyfill first because 
This clip node got rid of the bottom of our geometry. See right there. So we're going to set this to a single polygon because we don't need all those polygons. And that will just make it so that we can create a VDB with a VDB from polygons. And we want to crank this down to like 0.01 should be good to give us a pretty good representation of our shield there. And then let's drop down a null after that. And we'll just call this out shield collider. And then we can dive back into our pop net. So in our pop net, we need to come to the static object and we need to come to the stop path and just set up that shield collider that we had set. Now, if I press play, we should have our particles, if I turn them back on, moving towards our shield and they're hitting and they're actually bouncing off. So that's something that we do need to tackle. We need to not have that happen. We need them to just stay where they hit. And we can do that by turning off this bounce. And that's only, I guess, step one of this. So we'll ensure that they actually stick where they actually hit the shield in a moment. But let's go ahead and turn off this display geometry as well because I don't want to see our shield. We just want to make sure that they are actually hitting and they're stopping, which you can see that they are right there. So we have the particles all hitting there and staying. So now we need to actually detect the collision because we want to take the particles that are colliding. We want to kill those particles and we want to spawn new ones in the exact same spot because we're going to spawn a, another object that we're going to use as a, a source for a second particle sim later on. And that'll make more sense kind of when we get to that, but we're going to kill these particles and spawn new ones when they collide. So we'll need to detect a collision. So we'll do pop collision detect. And we'll go ahead and rewind here. So we need to just create or set the, the stop path for that. So that shield collider that we had. And we want to come into the behavior. We want to just accumulate the hits there. We'll create a group with these and we'll say collided as the group name. And we can leave the colored hits on if you want, but they're gonna, we're gonna kill the particles anyways. We don't need to comp compute the hit total. And we want to make sure that the particles actually stop when they hit the shield. So now if I press play, you should see that the particles are starting to hit and they, they do look blue here. If I turn this off, you could maybe see if I zoomed really far in that the particles are actually red, but it's kind of hard to see. So it doesn't really matter. We are going to kill them anyways. That's why I said it doesn't matter, but the next node that we're going to use, this is just for a kind of a, a keeping things clean sake this is not actually needed is going to be the pop stream node so we're going to use this node to keep ourselves organized here we're going to check the source group and we're going to make that the collided group and this allows us to pull in just particles that are in that group and do things with them so we're going to take the particles that are in those groups and we're going to take a pop replicate and we're going to spawn particles on top of those particles. So let's go ahead and wire this in just to start off here. And if I rewind and press play, you can see once the particles hit our object, they're going to spawn a bunch of particles in the same vicinity, but not directly on top of each other. So we need to tackle that as well. So we want to take the, we're also spawning way too many particles. We just want one. So we're going to take the constant birth rate and turn that off. And we're going to take this impulse count and turn that to one so that when a particle hits, it's spawning another one. We want to change the life expectancy because I don't want these to last too long. So something like 0.25 with a variance of like 0.05 should do the trick. And we also want to kill the original particle. And then we need to tackle the fact that they're not spawning directly on top of where they were hit. So we come into the shape section. And you can see it's set to sphere by default. That's why it's spawning them in a random sphere. If I were to set it to box, you can see that it's going to spawn. Well, if I were to, let's just set this back to a hundred for now and turn this back to like 500, just so you can see what is going on here. So you can see that they're spawning in a box now. So that shape is very important for this. So let's set this back to 0 0.25, 0 
0.25 and just turn that constant activation back off and the impulse count back to one. Let's come back to the shape and we want to set this to point so that they spawn only on the point that they originally were impacting at. So you can see that we have the points being spawned and the old one was being killed off. The new one is spawning and it's lasting for a varied amount of time, but just like a quarter of a second there, not too long, which is kind of what we're looking for. So next we need to actually put these particles into a group because we're going to use that here in a minute. So we'll drop down a pop group node and we'll go ahead and name this just like hit spawner something like that should be fine and then that is all for the pop net for the moment so we'll jump back out here and you see we have our shield that's showing up and we don't want that so we need to come into this simulation actually yeah in our uh, object merge sorry we want to take the static object that we had, which is our shield. We want to omit that. So we can do that with this little carrot sig, uh, sign. And now we should have only our particles that are being spawned, which you see that we have. So now we want to take those particles and we want to create the next set of geometry for the second simulation here. So I'm going to drop down a null just to keep things a little bit organized here. And I'm going to drop down a blast because we only want the particles that are already hit, have already hit our shield. So we're going to come in here, we're going to go to hit spawner, and there are a couple of other ones there. Actually, when they hit the, the shield, they actually do get put into a group, but just did this for our own namesake here. So we'll just delete the non-selected. So we only want the particles that are in that group that have hit our object here. And we want to set this to points as well. And we should have some points once they are hit. Looks like it is not working. We have points. Why do we not have any points here? So hit spawner. Let's see. Oh, we forgot to enable this group. Sorry one thing that you need to do it's imperative so let's press play again and then we should start to see our points yeah there we go we should have points which we do and then we need to take those points we have some attributes on them that we want to use so we want to take the age attribute and we're going to use that to drive the scale of an object that we're going to use for a secondary sim so let's take an attribute promote and we're just going to promote or sorry not promote attribute rename and we want to rename our age attribute so age and we want to call that p scale and then we can drop down an attribute adjust float because it is going to have a really small p scale just to start off with and that's not exactly what we want you want or it's going to it's going to grow uh really slowly i guess i should say um so we want to multiply this by a value of like six and then we want to set up the normals on top of these points so that they we can have our objects so we're going to copy to these be oriented correctly so we need to take our original geometry here our original shield geometry, we want to drop down a normal node and set this to points. And now we have some points or some point normals. You can see if I zoom in here, we have point normals on our object. And we want to transfer those with an attribute transfer to our points. So we'll wire that into the second input and our points into the first. And we come into the points and we say, we want the point normals. And now if I look at our points, you see that we have the normals on our points. And that's pointing away from our, our shield, which is what we're looking for for that. So now we need to actually create the geometry to use as a secondary spawner for another simulation. So I'm going to use a tube. 
And I'm going to set the radius scale to like 0.6 and 0.5. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to drop the height down to zero because I just want to have basically this little kind of spherish looking thing with a hole cut out, cut out of the middle. And I want to crank up the columns to like 50. It should work. And then we want to make sure that this is oriented right, which we'll tackle in a minute actually. But we want to... Actually, we'll, we'll just do that now. So copy of points, and we'll take our points, put that in the second input, and the first input is going to be that tube. And we'll bring back our shield geometry. You can see that they're not oriented correctly, so you want to make the axis the z-axis, and you can see that it is now sitting basically on top of the shield there which is more in line with what we're looking for. And it is growing over time, but they're a little bit big. So let's drop down a transform in here and let's scale them down. So we want them to be not zero, but we want them to be really small to start off with. So something like that maybe. Oh, never mind. that was the end lifespan or the end size. So let's make them a little bit bigger, maybe like that. Now they start off small and they get larger, which is more in line with what we're looking for. So in the next video, I'm going to dive into a couple of other things. We're going to actually start to create the secondary sim and we're going to have particles being spawned on top of this object. They're going to kind of move along the shield. And then we will also tackle the laser impacts, having them uh, spawn particles and kind of shoot off of our shield as well. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to grab the project file and get to that before I actually jump into this, then you can do that on Patreon. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. Uh, I've got a bunch of other videos on my channel that go over a ton of different things in Houdini. So if you're interested in learning more about Houdini, go ahead and head on over there and take a look at what interests you. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.